Now, in everything that we have heard, justifying the basis for a new craft. And by the way, I'm absolutely upset that these fellows would dare to play with the intelligence of the Nigerian public. Between the executive, the president, the presidency, the National Assembly, I think they, they are decided that they are the bandits. They are the bandits, Ooh, the, the, all of them. The political class has decided that they are the bandits against the people of Nigeria. Because I do not see how it is feasible that the topmost priority of a government that has this level of biting hunger in the land, this level of poverty, where it's people are dropping into poverty per minute, would consider the purchase of a befitting aircraft for the president. The construction of a 20 billion Naira home for the vice president. The purchase of all kinds of funny looking cars and the fleet of the National Assembly members and the executive. What exactly is that? And I speak with a lot of moral authority. I served this country. They want everything about what I earned. They can find it in their folder. As a minister, I had, they have something called uh, minister's impress or something vote. My pump said, Abokizawa will tell you until tomorrow that I did not touch a dime. So when people say the, all these things, like, were you not in government? I was in a sane government. I wasn't in a government that watches women screaming, e power, e power, we're hungry, we haven't eaten. People used to do zero, zero something or zero, one, zero, one. Today, families write and say, my children haven't eaten in the last three days because we just cannot afford the prices and the market. The things that happen in Nigeria on a daily basis, it defies logic. It just so that Nigeria is not a real place. It's like we are living in an alternate world. We are living in an alternate reality. Whatever is happening here, just you can't just fathom it. Because we are going down the drain on a daily basis. Everything about this country is being eroded in our very own faces. And people are calm. People are okay with it. People are not doing anything about it. It's like we are accustomed to the rot in the system. Our politics has become politics of mediocrity. Politics of laughing stone. It has become politics of compensation. During the time of Obasanjo as president, you can see the level of engagement. You can see the level of political discourse that centers on our airways during that period. Social media was not rampant then, but you can see the level of discussion that took the center stage then. You can see the level of discussion on the national television. You can see the topics that were being rolled out by our press media. But today, everything has been eroded. You could see the level of bills that were being discussed on the floor of the National Assembly. You could see the level of discourse there. You could see the level of engagement. You could see the National Assembly holding people to account, holding executive, holding politicians to account. You could see the EFCC arresting prominent politicians for engaging in corruption. But just in our very eyes, just in a span of few years, in a span of eight years, everything that has kept this country one everything that we grew up to watch, everything that we grew up to enjoy in this country, they've all been taken away from us because we decided to be mediocre. We decided to elect people we know nothing about. We decided to go the route of tribalism, the route of ethnicity, the route of religion to elect our leaders. Look at the level of ministers we are having today. Ministers that could not even defend the manifestos of their principal. Ministers that could not even tell Nigeria Nigerians what their ministers have in the coffer for them. Look at the level of government aid we are having today. Government has become mere compensation rather than merit. You saw the ministers of Olusha Go Basanjo, you saw the ministers of Good Luck Ebene Jonathan. Can you compare them with what we had under 
President Muhammadu Bari and Under Bola Ahmed Tinibu. This is the reason why we are where we are today and it's quite unfortunate that we are not getting out of the woods anytime soon. I know you're very optimistic. I know you have hope for Nigeria but what we are currently having now there is no hope for this country because right in our very eyes everything is being destroyed look at what Bola Metinibu is doing after the protest the people they complain of hunger they complain of hardship they complain of insecurity but Bola Metinibu being the most insensitive and inconsiderate president we have is ordering a 150 million dollars presidential jet did I say $150 million? According to Paramount Business Jet, the price of a new Airbus A330 is $264.2 million. $264.2 million. Do you know how much that is? That's over 416 billion naira. 416 billion naira in an economy that is battered according to Bola Ahmed Tinibu. This man said he inherited a battered economy but his attitude, his action has shown that he did not inherit a battered economy. But what Nigerians are not asking, where did they get this money to buy a new presidential jet from? Where did this money come from? There is no explanation whatsoever as to where this money came from. They just went and purchased a brand new Airbus presidential jet for the president because according to them the 19 year old presidential jet that was bought during the time of Olusegun Obasanjo is non old the welfare of the president is paramount of course the welfare of the president is paramount but the welfare of the president becomes paramount if the welfare of the citizen has been taken care of the reason why the president is there is to ensure the protection and the welfare of the citizen from all the indication and what we have seen in the past one year since Bola Metinibu took over as the president of the federal republic of nigeria the citizen has experienced nothing but hardship hunger pain starvation inflation it is therefore an act of irresponsibility insensitivity callousness soullessness wickedness of the highest order for the president to go and buy a new presidential jet of such amount when the citizens are living in abject poverty in penury there is nowhere in the world this level of wickedness will be allowed to go on there is nowhere in the world anyone any citizen can tolerate this level of soullessness from the executive arm of government just recently there was a massive protest in nigeria against bad government against hunger against corruption against high cost of governance but the presidency is turning deaf ears to the demands of nigerians to the reason why nigerians are protesting and they've gone ahead to spit it on the face of nigerians that they don't care about their feelings they don't care about their demands they don't care about their complaints they don't care about their sufferings and indeed according to obi ezekwesili these people are bandits. Who is a bandit? A bandit is someone that robbed the people, that kidnapped the people. And Nigerian politicians, they are robbing from the people, they are kidnapping the destiny of the people, they are kidnapping our resources, they are robbing us of our natural resources, and they are using it to enrich and satisfy their selfish personal aggrandizement. These people are not there for governance. These people are not there for leadership. They are there for their own personal pocket. Because I don't see the reason why Nigeria that is blessed with all the natural resources in the world, but the citizen can barely afford one square meal a day. Majority of the citizens are living in poverty. We have the highest out of school children. We are suffering insecurity. There is absolutely nothing that is working in this country. When you compare the level of development, the level of pace we were developing in 2012, compare it now you will notice that we are going down gradually but the most unfortunate aspect of it is that some citizens who are the receiving end they are still supporting this level of bad governance sooner we realize that these guys are not destroying their future they are destroying our future the better for us the sooner we come together as citizens and stand up against these bandits these bandits are the corridors of power the better for us these guys are not representing our interests they are representing their own interests look at yourself and ask a very important question what exactly has been the benefit of government since they took over from pdp in 2015 till now why do you keep supporting them are you supporting them because of religion are you supporting them because of ethnicity are you supporting them because of party affiliation ask 
yourself a very important question of what benefit is this government to your life it is high time we say enough is enough to all of this it is high time we come together and put an end to this nobody absolutely nobody will stop this wrath of criminality the only people that can stop it is us thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video